This is the director, Kristen Baker. She directed Alzheimer's. <laughs> the president of Telefilms, and uh, she's changing the world. And these are our stars. The amazing Guinevere Turner. The spectacular Mandela Rose. God, we're so lovely. And I'm Richie Jimenez. I'm the writer. I'm in it. My wife is in it, too. Hi, wife. Why don't you come up here? You want to come up here? Yeah. I got it. We can take selfies. Thank you guys for watching, for those who did. It was full room. It was full room. I snuck in at the beginning, and then I had a panel at 4.15. I know, it's too much. Did you get my text? I got pulled out of a room because I was in the wrong... I it. It doesn't matter. Anyway. I'm going to pee under the seat. That's cool. <laughs> That's why I was like, it's only... You guys were... I need to be doing autographs right now until 5.45. Oh, shit. No. Yeah. Hi, guys. Thanks for coming. Thanks for supporting uh, lesbian and queer content. So this is our little quick Q&A. Um, does anybody have any questions before we get started, before we start talking about things? Yes. What? Yes. Do you keep your wallet? <laughs> yes. Turn it on to real. Oh. Um, I, uh, yes. Is that correct? Okay. Let me just do this. Yeah, there's a thing over here. Go to the next to my dog. Yes, I do. Sometimes <laughs> do that. Because sometimes we answer tight, and sometimes no I'm the camera on our relationship. Does anybody here either yeah, either put their wallet in their lady's bag or they or they have a bag to put their in every relationship I've been in, you have said no, I have said I'm not from you. Oh, I'm always covered to you. Um, if anything, so covered towards <laughs> Also I'm single, so that might be fun. <laughs> Why do you guys think I wear those vests? Is it just because they look cool? They actually have hidden pockets on the inside. Oh my god. Oh, yes. I don't want you wearing a vest, Garmin. That's not happening. You can borrow one of mine. Um, for those of you who saw the film, um, I think there's a lot of chemistry between these two actresses. I think they were very oh, fearless. Uh, does anybody have any questions for them about acting in such an intimate movie? Um, is it, sorry, is it better, well I wouldn't say better, but is it more comfortable or easier for you to do like sex scenes or intimate scenes in a um, production company that is work group people where it's not something that's made for a male gaze? Is it easier as actors to act together and feed off each other without having to worry about what's going on around you? Um, I mean, doing sex scenes in general is so weird. Or, or, you know, intimate scenes. Um, and having done both, uh, you know, scenes with men and scenes with women, I, uh, and on queer dominated sets versus not, I would say 100%. When you're absolutely sure that the people in the room and the people who are involved with the production and are creating it are uh, doing it for, you know, the right reasons, that it's not. You know, ooh, sexy lesbians, let's watch. It's, it's about like, no, let's represent it. Let's try to represent it uh, in, a, in a way that feels true. Um, it's all the difference in the world. And, and also, between actors, it's all the difference in the world. I did a, uh, a web series in London in the last couple of years, and the woman who plays my wife, we had a sex scene, and literally three minutes before we were about to shoot the scene, she said, I'm, I'm so glad that my first sex scene is with a woman. And I was like, what? So she's, she's married and uh, to a man and has a kid. I was like, would you never done a sex scene at all? And she was like, no. And I'm, she's like, I'm really glad it's with a woman. And I was like, why? Like, and she said, boners. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, that same woman, this is a web series I mean called Different for Girls, which is interesting and fun. Um, that same woman, as we were getting you know, into what we needed to do the scene, and she was like, oh, and by the way, as she takes off her clothes, um, I'm three months pregnant. Oh, and she, what? And she said, and that's, that's why my boobs are so big, and I'm like, I literally have never seen your boobs. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, funny things that happen right before you shoot a sex scene. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Hi. Hello. Um, absolutely. It is a much more comfortable. Uh, it's much more comfortable when a lot of 
the people that are on the set are women. It's safe. And also just like the set that Kristen had, it was a safe set. And I mean, apart from her telling me to take my pants off all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's, it's, it's pretty true. fun. No, absolutely. Much safe. And I've done I've done sex scenes with guys and girls. And I do hit the bone thing. <laughs> I remember Nick was like Look, don't um, don't take offence if I get a boner, and don't take offence if I don't. <laughs> I was like, thanks, sure. dance belt or something. Awesome, <laughs> mate. So, just in general, um, being surrounded by women is feels more comfortable. Yes. We were lucky that where we were shooting, actually, because of the script, it was supposed to be like a back house. It was supposed to be a very small space, so there was just not a lot of room. So even myself as the writer and co-producer, I wasn't in the room at all. So when I was looking at the dailies, because I was assisting with the editing, and I saw uh, that she was topless, I went, okay. Like, I did not know that happened. I did not know that happened, because it was just, you know, camera, camera assistant, our sound person, and Kristen. So it was just, yeah. and, and when I did a, another movie, uh, series with, with uh, Kristen in Nashville uh, called Maybell, we were in bed together, and that was just our two camera people. I think our sound person was even outside. And it's just, when it's for me, when it's less people, I like it, because it's just a lot of less people. Yeah glaring and you also then you don't get everybody's opinions you just get the pe person's opinion that right. you need yeah and also at least for me we're working on a queer project it's it's less about the sex act and it's more about the connection and if there's no connection there like one of my favorite parts of if you have or haven't seen Allison is a is when they or my favorite scene is when they're in the back of the car they're in the back of the car and they're going and this is their first like hey how are you and it's these moments of like looking not looking it's laughing so it's, it's so, so good bad. I watch her I know, yeah, that's my, yeah, yeah. she's yeah. a performance artist named Dynasty Handbag, and she just makes me laugh, she's, she's, yeah, she's fantastic, we love her, but it was like, that was so, for me, erotic and sexual, just seeing these two, like, flirt and play, more so than when you watch, like, Blue is the Warmest Color, and it's just like a fist in your head, like, you're just like, <laughs> okay, great, like, that's, that's just my opinion about that, but I think that, um, yeah, we were, so the original script that Bridget wrote, um, that we went to shoot with had a had a very definite. Oh yeah. Um, we're not getting each other's numbers. At the this end. is over. Like we're, this was a one night thing, and we're done. And I think we did. Was it four days in the house? Three. No, three, three days in the house. Three days in the house. And I came out in the middle of it. I go, Bridget, we're going to make so many people mad. I'm like, you can't, we can't end it like this. I was like, the, their chemistry is ridiculous. Like, I'm, I don't want them to break up. Like, you have to change the ending. Like, we have to change the ending. There's another piece called Is It and Alice, and it's where they meet, I'm serious, when they meet yeah. two years later and where they are in their lives and they have another one next end. I don't know if you guys know this, but you're doing it yet. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I got it. Because of that, after, because, because, the, like, because we I talked about this. And I was like, do you, no, I said, this is, I can't, I can't do this if it ends like, I mean, of course, but I was like, you, we can't, I literally, I was like, we can't do this. I just didn't want it to be like, and now we get married and adopt two dogs. Like, I wanted it to be like, women, right. like, we are sexual, we have a connection, it doesn't have to be everything, but at the same time, this was like, but it can, it, their lives can cross. You can leave it open. Yeah. You can leave it open. And exactly. it wasn't open, it was like, I'm not getting your no, number, this end. was a whole thing, and we're never going to see each other again, bye. I think, I think you just made my weekend. <laughs> <laughs> you get together. You get together. So, yeah, it's, so it, the first one was kind of following Alice's, I mean, you probably follow both of you, but it kind of was a little more Alice, yeah. and this one's a little more Alice. Yeah. But we have to talk, we have to talk about this. That's really inappropriate. I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I'll just do it to the public. It's fine. <laughs> so my wife was in it, and my wife is amazing, um, and she plays, she plays, um, <laughs> A, a, a wife of my friend Fran, who's in another series name called um, Maybell, and uh, Fran and I play <laughs> lovers, gross, in that series. And then you play uh, partners with uh, with Fran in the series. So how how was it working with another woman that wasn't your beautiful, amazing wife of eleven years? <laughs> she's, she's no Bridget. But um, Fran Nichols is amazing. She's so her. funny, and uh, and we joke about like the fact that the only other person we've been like on screen with is this one woman, Fran Nichols. <laughs> Who's on Grace and Anne right back now. And She's Nurse Karen on Grace and Anne. She's a really and amazing actor. Nurse. And very funny. And it was really funny to watch you play a creep. I really enjoyed oh, it. so <laughs> gross. She just so, totally sexually harasses the driver in the movie. And it's um, gross. What I, what I liked about 
the scene of uh, the friends in the car is you see like different levels of relationships. We have, you know, she went through her divorce. You're the most, you're the, the protagonist. You're the most sane one. And then we have this like married couple and they've been together for a long time. And you can tell this love there because it's banter and playfulness. But it's like, it's not just like we're coming together for the first time. It's not just like super sexualized. I feel like it's like real people. Like when you asked about karma, did you, did you really put your shit in my back? Because that's something that really happens. Like, I feel like when you're watching a movie or a show and something's relatable, you're like, because that happens in your life. So when I, I always ask Carmen in a project I did, I go, what do you want me to write for you? So I did a Mabel she was in and she wanted me to write Candy Powers, if you guys know about Eastbound yeah. Down. It's just like a really gross dude who's just a dick. And that's what I wrote for her. And that's what I said to her. She's like, I want to be, I want to just be me, but like more like, fuck it. And I'm like, okay. So, so writing that, it was like, I, I wanted the dimensions like, I'm the idiot, like, Obviously, I'm successful in that in the in the series because I have a house and a back house, so like something's going on well with me. But I'm also like a creep and weird, the single one, and you're like the regular human being that's like gone through relationships and you're open, and then then they're this long-term married couple. So I wanted to show different levels of lesbianism, if that makes any sense. Because I feel like sometimes you watch a movie, it's just like that group of friends, and they're all going through the same thing. And I, I wanted to show, and then having Amber, our driver, like she's she's younger, you know, like her just being like she's gay, but she's also just like not interested, just wants to fucking do her job. Like I just for that, that was so exciting because not only do I get to cast all my amazing friends. I mean, this was a dream cast. It was like Kristen's like, you think you can get to Guinevere Turner? And I was like, maybe I have some champagne. Maybe I can. Get some. <laughs> like it was like I wrote these parts for these people, and then they ended up being it. Like that's just a dream come true. Yeah, but. Um, so awesome because Thanks. every single person was different, but they were all friends. Yeah, right? Do you ever see a show where you're like, people are together and they're friends, and you're like, they're not fucking friends. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you're not friends. Yeah. Or they just go over and put like this ethnicity, this ethnicity, and like, great, but that's, they're not friends. They check the box. Exactly. But so I, for me, it's like, I believe these all these idiots are friends. <laughs> and just so you know, we were shooting these scenes in the car. Chris and Baker, our director, was in the trunk of the car with the camera. Because, you know, when you're doing indie projects, you can make it work, you guys. And we built, we gave a shout out to our DP. We were supposed to have a camera rig, and you guys know shooting and all. You, you set it on the mount of your car. We didn't, the, thing, the miscommunications, we didn't have one, and she built one. She made one. She fucking made it. Worked. And it worked. But we were there for like an hour. Like, we're losing light. And she was like, bitch, I'm making you. <laughs> so there's always a way to do something. But you guys were in the car. I mean, I didn't know what happened until you came back. How was shooting in the car? Because me, Kristen was in the trunk. How was shooting? Yeah. Oh, did I have a monitor? I did have you a had a monitor. monitor. I closed the trunk on you. You were in the back seat. <laughs> well, the thing is that we did it all like in one take over and over. Just kept driving around like here. Driving in circles. There's like a point I just noticed where I just like, hold on. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's me, 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 need to make a left here. Um, but actually, you know, that particular part felt like theater a bit because it's like, get it and like find different moments in it. And, you know, we did a bunch of stuff as I'm sure you saw in the editing room. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, get it. Done. Like, okay, like, remember your lines. If you don't remember your lines, just remember your moment, which is like, I'm just going to say silly stuff because I'm funny. Mm -hmm. this, the scene with all the girls in the car, all the friends in the car, was one take. Mm -hmm. We just cut it to, like, a close-up, which was not originally a close-up. We just made it a fake close-up. So it was all just, like, one take of a car, which is what I wanted, because we were talking about doing it, having different cameras. Because the scene with you guys in the car, we had, because we were covering Choo Choo, our driver, we had, we did it a little differently. And so, but our scene was just all one take, which I thought kind of worked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Except in the editing room, of course, you have to, yeah, that's bullshit, you have to be like, um, so who, like, what do I, you, uh, you must have had to sacrifice things, right? You were the thing like, I, I said, I look amazing, but that wasn't quite right, but it's one take, so you have to just pick the best take, yeah. right? I wasn't there in the editing. The only thing we changed was I went off, my character, Cherry, went off on a little tangent of a story, and I was like, I don't fucking, and I even, I, I'm always about cutting to that. So I was like, I don't care about the story, it doesn't lead to this, let's just cut, so we cut in a close-up, which is what helped us with the editing, and it just took about 30 seconds off it, which I think just worked better. But besides that, you look great in every fucking take. You're killing it. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I think the, in, the, in that car scene with, with these, one of the things I love is like how their eyes, like if you look at their eyes, it's like you'll see Guinevere look over and Randall's looking this, so they'll look like this way. 
and then one will turn just as the other was turning. And it was like, how the fuck did they do that? Like, it was like almost to, like... No, we just did that, right? We just, yeah. Just did that. You have, like, tension, like, you've never hung out before. And you guys have hung out, like, you've worked with them many times. And in that moment, I'm, I'm like, giddy. I'm like, oh, she likes her. It's like, you fucking, you're acting. Of course, you yeah, like, you guys are so good. Like, as a person that wrote it and made it up my brain or whatever, and then to see it, these two fantastic women create this vision, I'm just like, oh, I made these two people have sex. Like, how great is that? I believe it. For me, if I, if I watch a romance and there's no chemistry, it doesn't matter how good the script is. I mean, I feel that for the writer, but if there's no chemistry, then I don't fucking care. And there's, for me, there's a lot of chemistry in this. Yeah. Congrats. You guys and the pauses, too. I, like the, I just remember like that snake, the reptile thing, or like what? Oh, is this the game we're playing? Like, this is the game. Like, those are just these like moments where it's like you're you're like leaning in. And you're like, what are they gonna say next? What is she? What kind of animal does she have? She did. Oh, she's right. She did that. You know what I mean? It's just like this. It's yeah. It's just like. Not did I make normal. up all that weird snake shit that I said? No, the no, snake was in there. Like the, the, the gecko or whatever you said wasn't in there. But yeah, <laughs> that's not that. Like, I like elaborating. It was a bearded dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But there was a, the snake thing was in there. Yeah. And then reptile. Yeah, that was all in there. Yeah. She's that good of a writer. She I'm such a great writer. writer. <laughs> <laughs> <She's> <laughs> well, I want to say one of the things I love working with Brenda Bridger. She's just the best of the, like she is. Really. Cream and crush. Really. Just the best. Is yes. that we we had a, we had a, a sit down for like a long time, and she was just like, "This doesn't make sense. Why would my character do this? I think this makes sense." She's such a brilliant, amazing writer too. Um, but it was like it, it made me rework things. So as a writer, I always say like, you need to have some flexibility. You, you can't just be so locked into like this is how it has to be, unless you're directing it to and you're editing it to. You have a vision. But for me, I like to collaborate, and I was like, whatever works for you guys. I mean, the fact that like I literally changed the ending. I did the same thing with Abel. I changed the ending like the day I, before. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that worked better for you guys. Like, you guys had such great chemistry. It was like, I, we can't just end this. No. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, oh, I thank have you. a question for you, too. Yes, bye. Thank you. So, you've written a romantic drama, Mabel, you know, right? A romantic comedy. Allison is a... So this is kind of like, I, I go to all the movies with you, and I know that you like every genre, but you really like writing the genre. And so what is it that you, like, what do you want to achieve when you're sitting down to, like, give an idea to write a, a romantic themed movie? What is it that you're hoping to get right? Like, what is your litmus test for yourself? I always just want to have that feeling. Does anyone ever watch a romantic movie or series, and you watch it again and again? Or there's that, like, one moment in the show, like, or from Black or whatever, you just have to, like, go to that part. Like, I watch like the six feet under last finale moment. Like it's certain things you just watch. Like that's the moment. So like the reason I make the things that I make is always has to be a romantic element because I need love. Love is everything to me. And I just uh, I have I pitch an idea to Kristen and she says, Let me tell you why this doesn't work. And she moves things around here and there. <laughs> but the the through line is always like exactly it's just like love and connection. And how it ends or whatever I, I always want them to end up together because that's just that's just what you want to happen. And if everyone always has to be out. I just personally always write for out lesbians because that's what I want to see. And um, I'm just going to write more love stuff. Yeah, love. More love, love wins. Guys. More love stuff. So it's a romantic action movie. Is that what you want? <laughs> well, I wrote a series called Cop Dog. I wrote a series called Cop Dog, Dog Cop, where Carmen and our dog, Tabby, are. Is, no, but it's our cop. Yes. Did you not read the script I gave you? Anyways. Yeah. So, and I, I, her, Chris and I said she, she'd shoot it, and she's just mad at me. Bridget wrote this eight years ago. I did. <laughs> I have yet to see it. <laughs> but you do have an action romance in The Hopper, too, the one we talked about. The, the, what? The assassin. <gasps> oh, the assassin series. It's a romantic assassin oh, series. Oh, yeah, definitely. The person's, we're going to shoot Chris's house in Nashville. Yep. If we wanted you to be in it. We'll talk about it later. Um, yeah. So what about the idea that you fall in love with somebody that you think you're like, oh, this is one person, and you find out they're an assassin, but they're still hot. So that's that's another thing. <laughs> I, I dig it. Yeah. I wanna. I just really want to be. I want someone to write a part for me where I get to be the evil villain who's controlling the superhero. Oh. Okay. Like my yeah. <laughs> control or like like. Like, you could do that so well. <laughs> <laughs> I really feel like I, I, I've not that? been. I mean, okay, we'll write it tonight. I was going to be like the super villain where you're like, what's all, why is this all happening? Like, what's, who's, who's the antagonist? If you want to be a super villain, we'll be screening this shit next year at Lex yeah. Guys. If you want to be a super villain, <gasps> you want to be a feature, a feature, or a series, or a regular series. We're not going to be a 
I'm writing this for you. Yeah, feature or short or what's yours? I mean, yeah. just create the character. Okay, we're done. We're done. <laughs> Great. Oh, you can get there. You're wearing an eye patch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, no, no eye patch. I said on her boob, it was a joke. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> a boob patch, exactly. Um, can I ask the actors uh, any difficulty or anything that you uh, you, have, you struggle with? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Winifred has a list, so don't lie and say no. The things that I struggle with no bags on the ground. So lucky. <laughs> um, no, I mean, honestly, the biggest thing that I always struggle with with sex scenes is that you're in a small, hot room, it was hot. and you will feel like you're smelly, and you don't want to be smelly <laughs> with, with your co-actor. Yeah. So always like, smells amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's, there's a level of intimacy that's not actually about sex, but it's about, like, I have to, you and me and our bodies have to be next to each other for some time, and that's always, I'm always like, and you know, there's a there's an etiquette to it that's really delicate. But I mean, we've worked together before, so we're we're get, we're good at it. -ish. But that well, you're right. That what actually was something. It was a it was a hot box in there. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's a, I was lucky because I was mostly naked, so I was cool as. Um, <laughs> but it was hot and it was clammy and it was it did we we, we yeah. did get out being like oh my god like <laughs> yeah. the fresh air. But I. No, I didn't have any. I enjoyed. I really enjoyed yeah, we just get along as actors, and you know, mm -hmm. we just, it, we're lucky that way. Yeah. But people are just going to be like, "Why are they in another movie together? <laughs> are they? You know what I mean? Like, it's actually we can't just keep that. being. No. Well, it's going to look like Christmas first, though. Even though Crazy Bitches was first. Because as a oh, yeah. don't come over this first. Huh? There's three. Oh, there's three. Don't there's going to be nine action sexes. Oh, the VR thing. Mm. Does anybody have any questions for our director, Chris Baker? Yeah. Um, Chris, you have a question? Yeah. Um, so, Chris, you're doing Christmas Vacation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, so we have, so Tello used to be just a web-based only. We weren't on all the apps. Or we were not. We didn't have an app. We couldn't get us on Roku or Apple TV or anything like that. And so um, it really was limiting a lot of people from like kind of like Tello and Chillin, right? Because you had to go online. Like you can throw it to your TV, and a lot of people want to watch stuff on their smart TV. So we had to make the move to get on like I think it's five different what are called OTT platforms, and on Android and Apple, and it's really expensive to do that, to move from just web-based only to all the apps. And so so I think there, there's two things. First, we we started $3.99 like 10 years ago, and we went up to $4.99. So in the 10 years that we've been around, like we've gone up a dollar. So now we have you know, hundreds of hours of content. We have so much more content than we ever have, and it's available on all the apps. But with that just comes like the cost of doing that is higher. Um, and so we had to go up to our six ninety nine now, um, but which is still I know I don't I don't like going over like a grande soy latte is what I say so like it's about less than a drink you like, go any place like, for a drink maybe a venti depending on the taxes in the city that you're at but so I've always tried to stay around like kind of like a fancy coffee drink price um, and yeah so it's still you know less than Netflix and Hulu and all that jazz. But, um, and not only that, like we're actually now, uh, starting in 2018, we started taking non-exclusive content. So we used to only take content that was only, that we could only find on Tello. And now I think we have enough content that you can only find on Tello that I was like, well, we should take other stuff. If you can find it on Amazon, if you can find it on Netflix, if you can find it on whatever, like let's take that and, and just have one place that you can go to. So that's when, so we opened up the platform as well. So we just, had a lot more stuff you can look at, and we had to figure out how to geo block and all that fun stuff. So, yeah, so we've opened up the platform. We've become bigger with our content. We have, you can find us more places. Um, I think it's a much easier functionality now. But again, like that all comes more expensive, so we had to raise our prices. I know, I do, yeah, I, I feel apologetic, but I don't anymore. Not anymore. $6.99 and worth it. Yeah. <laughs> but I, also, I also want to say to people like, 
any queer person, like you have to practice what you preach. Like if you want to see queer content, then you, you have to subscribe. Because like, that's the whole thing like why people claim that they don't want to put lesbians in big movies. It's like, well, no one's going to go see it, which of course we'll go see it. But if like, you know, it, like it costs money to do it. Like we're not, you know, making a lot of money off doing these projects, but we do them because they need to be done and we want representation. So I always say like, you think like, oh, I'll just borrow my friend's subscription. Like, subscribing to Hello, I think, is such an important thing to do, and it's six ninety nine a month. But it, it it's like it's funding, you know, queer lesbian women creators. And I mean, our set. There was one guy on set who who dropped brought crafty, and everyone else was a female. And I was like, Kristen, why'd you bring a crafty boy? I think he's gay. Is he gay? Omar. He's very bitchy. I think he's gay. But anyway, very bitchy. Oh, yeah, he's gay. Okay, so we have one gay man, and that, and that was like an issue for me. Yeah, so, you don't remember Biffle? Okay, so he's gay. Good. Fantastic. <laughs> but I think it's all, I mean, you're just getting female jobs. Like, that's the biggest thing in the world. We have to do that. So, if you haven't subscribed to Tello, please do T E L L O films. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yes. I bet it dances 2007. That's right. And on Apple and Android app. Fantastic. Bringing you Christmas movies called Seasonal Love. Yeah. The lesbian see, um, Christmas movie. You want to talk about that? Sure. We are making a lesbian Christmas movie. Uh, it's like a love actually, but instead of like eight storylines that love actually has, it says three. And it's these like intersecting storylines that takes place from like four days before Christmas through New Year's. Um, and so it's like three different, very different kinds of couples that all fall in, in and out and then in love. So that's it. And it's, we're, yeah, we're and you're directing it. To production. Yep, mm -hmm. I'm directing it. I'm a super cheap director. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I am, I'm affordable for me. So, <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Um, can you talk about your film that you yeah, wrote? Sure. That's mm -hmm. Um, at, so I have a movie. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. Who's doing a profile on you, Guinevere? What can we look up? Was it Rolling Stone? No. Well, um, are you in Rolling Stone? I will be. Yes. 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 Oh, that, that LA Times is doing a profile. LA Times, excuse me. LA Times is doing a profile on this journal. Uh, so it's a movie I wrote called Charlie Says, uh, which is about the women who kill for Charles Manson and their time in prison. And what's funny and relevant to this space is that I was asked, you know, when I got the job, they said, write a movie about the Manson girls. And I was like, I roll. <laughs> Not girls. They've been in prison for 50 years, also not his. Um, and then I was like, how do I tell the story? It's like everybody's heard the story, or everybody certainly just heard the story and versions of the story. And then I really, really researched it, and what I found was a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> True story. Um, and in the movie is that once they were in prison, they were. They were sentenced to death, but then the death penalty was lifted in California in 1972. So they were stuck on a death row that was built just for them. And the warden of the prison, also a woman, warden of a prison, even women's prison in 1972, was a rare thing. She asked this young grad student to give these women a feminist consciousness while they were stuck on this sort of purgatory of death row. And so this woman, played by the amazing Merritt Weaver, um, how much do you love Mary? Oh, um, is, is, is part of most of my movie is about her sort of reading, giving them sisterhood is powerful and our bodies ourselves, and them reading it and being these women who have just been in the cult and um, and just finding a feminist consciousness. Fantastic. Of course. I mean, I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this movie. I don't know what to say. And I'm like. Oh! Fantastic. Congratulations. And you have a movie coming out. I do. I have a couple of movies. You have a whole bunch of things. I have a lot of things coming out. You want to share any of them? Sure. Um, so tonight at Nine would go a passage directed by, I'm not sure if you've heard of Kristen Baker. But she's directed a passage. I was like, cool. Something comparable, Kristen Baker. Um, and then um, bookending that with Biffle. So, um, an LGBTQ comedy with a lot of drama. I play Sarah, they them there, East Lesbian. Um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> and yeah, wait, I'm just yeah, sorry. Let me just tell you a little bit about Mandala. So I I um, met I think we met last 
Lexicon. And then she came to this other event, and I think I said to her, like, why haven't we done something together? And then now there's like three things that we've done together. And she, so she's in Alice and Issa and played like, like this suave, like, badass, you know, like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm living life and like, that's I'm, her impression of you. I'm a massage <laughs> therapist and, you know, I'm like, just like super cool and chill. And then in Passage, she plays like a super nerdy, like geeky, dorky type What, you wear glasses? glasses? Why are you nerdy? And she oh, like, oh, her hair back, she put glasses on and I, and I was like, hot, like, like, you're such a good actor. I was like, Mandel, and we had someone drop out, and so I texted Mandel, and I was like, I need you in Richmond in like two weeks, and she was like, I'm there, which is also amazing, thank you. Um, and I was like, I can Mandel play dorky? And like, sure enough, she is dorky Those as glasses. hell. I was like, oh my god, she can, and then she's a completely different character on Biffle, and like, you can literally watch them all, and it's like, like, holy crap, like, like she's completely she's different. Like, yeah. I know, but not everyone can do that. But this bitch can, it's so yeah. she, I know, geez. so it's like, it's, anyway, so I just had to say that, because she's totally, like, when you see, like, if you saw Allison Issa today, then you see Passage, and then you see, like, Biffle, she's going to be like, oh my god, like, completely different, which is just so amazing and lovely. You're playing Nelson Mandela next, right? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's actually Nelson. Is it Nelson Mandela? Is it Nelson Mandela? Oh, Mandela Con. I do I do actually have a feature film coming out, a straight one. Um, oh, which is, you know what, it's actually fun to play as well because, like, watching that, because I was, I was lucky enough to go to the casting crew screening. We shot it in Wickenburg, which is about an hour northwest of Phoenix. Um, very wild west. I was the only person of colour and queer person there as well. Um, which was interesting in itself, but it ended up selling out within half an hour, which was fantastic, um, in two nights. Um, and I had someone say that I play straight better than the actual straight guy. <gasps> 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 so that's what Alan's called for the love of Jesse. And if anyone has heard of Adrian Barbo, yeah, um, oh, she yeah. and I have some incredible, incredibly amazing shows together. So keep an eye out for that one. It's amazing. Fuck. Aren't you going to be in Venice? And I'm also going to be in Venice uh, season six. I fly to New York next month. What else are you doing? You don't get more shit. I don't get more shit. Share a couple of feature films. This just sounds. Um, Jacqueline and I are going to be shooting a feature film soon. Um, something we'll, we'll talk about that later. And I have another one called El Camino coming, hopefully. I play hyena, a mechanic with an El Camino, which, yes, I do own a 1974 El Camino. And a motorcycle. I love that she puts glasses on. She's really smart. That just makes me really happy. No, she's a, like her whole body language. Go ahead, Gloria. There you go. Oh, look at <gasps> oh God, you're so smart. God, you're fucking smart. So intelligent. So why should I not take mine off then? No, God, you're brilliant. Yeah, Scientist. So smart. <laughs> um, does anybody have any other questions about this one? The Alice Nizza. You don't. That's okay. Don't feel pressure. So, uh, second one. Second one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Second one. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> but, but it was something that, you know, hearing this, like, male teacher cycle you, it makes you go, like, you know, in our last panel, we are talking about how it's only a picture I get about this older lesbian coming out and how old she was and how old she was. And I said, how old is she? She said 33. And, I went, <laughs> and then she said, her male teacher said that, like, that's the, that's the age for old for, for women. And I was like, you need to go punch that guy in the fucking face and stop taking his class. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, so do you want, like, series of women and children? Older women series? Like, you know, like, okay, well, I'm just putting this out there. <laughs> Do you want my dog to play the alien? She's in all of our series. You just tell us what you want. <laughs> like, what do you guys like to watch? Like, les lesbian. Like, what are your favorite lesbian movies or series? I want to see more older. You want to see older? Perfect. Like, as old as thirty-three. <laughs> <laughs> older. Thank you. Exactly. Something is like you know. Don't get me wrong. I like the pretty people. Yeah. But hey, what do you mean? <laughs> no, I'm saying like. Older women are not just, they're beautiful. Yeah. In, anyone not, can be pretty. Did anything in that statement exclude older people? No, that is true. Well, she did say that. She said we pretty people, so I'm just letting you know that everyone is beautiful. That's what she said. You know that is true. Don't but anyway, it's like, yeah, the, the, the rest, I mean, there's, there's huge diversity here, so it's like, give us some of that. I want lesbian Cagney and Lacey, so I've always wanted. <laughs> I mean, I do, right? Yeah, yeah. More lesbian. Just more lesbian. <laughs> I mean, everything's all gay in our world, and I think. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah, just queer stuff. Carmen, what do you want to do next? Carmen has an album coming out, and you guys should be a musician. I love her. It's going to be my first EP back in production on it. She'll be wrapping up soon. I'm very excited about it. Her song that she wrote for her label called Honeybird um, was uh, nominated for an award, and so she's, uh, if anybody needs any music for their series or films, my wife is amazing. She's great. You are a good time, Rebecca, and you highlight. <laughs> anyway, yeah. How do we find your stuff? Uh, SoundCloud, Bandcamp. Uh, if you go to her website, CarmenTraglove.com, this yeah. links to all of it. And I know that because I designed her website. <laughs> <laughs> um, I only have one track up right now because I'm in the process of doing like some fixes on the other four. But so the one out, Hummingbird, you can find now. If you well, when's the EP website. coming out? June first is the aim. According to my manager, <laughs> June 1st is And then there's another album coming after that, but the June 1st is that, and we're going to have a uh, LA launch. So if you guys are not like, you want to come to the party. Yeah, we have some of Carmen's bandmates. Ariel is here, and Haley's in the back, her drummer. So yeah. So a preview is what I'm hearing. Right? Yeah. Yeah, sure. If they brought their instruments, they didn't. All right, last call on questions. Anyone have any questions? Can you guys give some love to our amazing actresses? Woo! And some love to our director, Justin Baker. Please subscribe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But if you take anything away, please subscribe to Total Films with all queer women content. So fucking much. There's comedy specials, there's, there's dramas, there's it's just features and short films is things that you you will love. Everybody has stuff on that you love. So thank you guys for coming. Enjoy your Pixicon.